Consciousness stands as the ultimate and singular reality, comparable to a cinema screen onto which images are projected. However, while the captivating images are displayed, the screen itself remains concealed from our sight. Only when we halt the projection do we perceive the screen's visibility. Thus, consciousness serves as the expansive canvas upon which all experiences emerge and dissipate, while the images and figures projected onto it are mere fleeting shadows. A sincere desire to alleviate suffering often arises within us. The root cause of suffering lies in our ignorance of our true nature, specifically, our lack of awareness regarding consciousness. This consciousness is referred to as an infinite and impersonal presence, adapting to take the form of every limited and personal manifestation of our physical body and mind. As we engage with our minds, we consciously or unconsciously align ourselves with its concepts and limitations. Using the mind temporarily entails endorsing its inherent constraints. The apparent reality within each experience is akin to a ripple within the vast ocean of our essential self. These experiences comprise mental phenomena such as thoughts, emotions, and perceptions, which vanish much like the ephemeral elements of a dream. Nevertheless, the core substance of these mental phenomena is our true self, the consciousness itself. Though it may seem illusory and non-existent from the perspective of objective experience, consciousness is, in fact, the very essence and reality of every encounter. The predicament arises when we mistakenly regard the unreal as real and the real as unreal. Thinking, imagining, feeling, seeing, hearing, and smelling represent particular modes through which knowledge manifests. But what constitutes knowledge? It is composed of what consciousness is aware of and experiences. In essence, knowledge is crafted from consciousness, our most intimate essence. Attempting to eliminate consciousness from our experience proves impossible. We cannot traverse beyond consciousness in our subjective experience. By following this line of reasoning, not merely intellectually but in our actual lived experience, we begin to acknowledge that consciousness itself forms the essence of every objective encounter. We recognize that the known is constructed from knowing, and knowing itself emanates from consciousness. Consciousness encompasses the fundamental reality of all things, permeating our every moment-to-moment -moment experience. It is not merely an abstract concept but rather an intimately lived encounter, direct and personal. You, as an individual, are inseparable from consciousness itself. That which remains consistently present with you can genuinely be identified as your essential self. If you closely examine your experiences, you will find that only consciousness is continuously with you. In exploring the nature of reality or the self, we venture beyond the ultimate level of consciousness and engage in discussions that point towards the ineffable, the unimaginable, and the indescribable. The ultimate response to inquiries about reality or the self always leads back to reality or the self, surpassing the limitations of verbal expression. Consciousness constitutes our primary and ever-present experience. It assumes the form of thoughts and imagination, manifesting as the mind, while taking on the guise of feelings to appear as the body. The notion that there exists a mind independent of thought, a body independent of feeling, or a world independent of perception is purely conceptual. The mind, body, and world are concepts that are never directly experienced as distinct entities. They are, in essence, the interplay of thinking, feeling, and perceiving, all of which are rooted in consciousness. Thinking, feeling, and perceiving are not separate from consciousness but rather integral aspects of it. Consciousness serves as both the substance underlying thoughts, feelings, and perceptions, as well as the knowledge derived from them. It may seem as though consciousness projects itself through the faculties of thinking, feeling, and perceiving, 
seemingly transforming into objects and a world. However, this projection perpetually remains within consciousness itself, even if it appears to extend beyond its boundaries. Consciousness, from its vantage point, seems to assume the role of the I on this side of the projection. In reality, all experiences form a continuous and interconnected substance. The perceived dichotomy between the inner self and the external objects of the world is never truly encountered in direct experience. It is an imagined construct, existing solely within the realm of thought. Consciousness appears to create a division within its own unity, resulting in the perception of an I and a world. This illusory separation gives rise to the distinction between the thinker and thought, the knower and known, and the experiencer and experienced. The unitary essence is fragmented into subject and object. Yet, if we retrace this projected path, moving in the opposite direction from its origin, we begin to diminish the significance of the mind, body, and world through the activities of thinking, feeling, and perceiving. Upon closer examination, we discover that these processes of thinking, feeling, and perceiving are ultimately manifestations of consciousness itself. We encompass both the witness and the substance of all experiences. The act of knowing these words and the act of being these words are inseparable facets of the same experience. It is merely a thought that partitions the continuous totality of experience into an experiencer. In actual lived experiences, there are no personal entities or independent objects to be found. The notions of I and the world are co-creations that arise in the realm of imagination. They always arise and fade together within the realm of that which transcends appearances and disappearances. They are two complementary aspects of the same fundamental reality. The currency of this reality is presence, this present consciousness. It is the very fabric in which actual experiences appear and from which they are constructed. The division of experience into a perceiver and a perceived, a knower and a known, is akin to a mirage. In truth, such a division never truly occurs. Both the experiencer and the experienced are composed of the act of experiencing itself, and this act of experiencing is rooted in the present consciousness. Every facet of experience is permeated with the presence of consciousness. The self and the world seemingly come into existence, yet this birth is merely an appearance. In actuality, there is no separate me or you, no distinct object or world. There is only the undivided presence. If we clear the doors of perception, the true nature of reality will be revealed, and man will perceive himself as infinite. By liberating the mind from its self-imposed limitations, it ceases to project those limitations onto the objects, others, or the world it perceives. In this realization, the mind unveils its inherent infinity, and objects or the world cease to be experienced as separate entities, but rather as manifestations of the radiant and infinite self-awareness of the divine being. What could this presence be, if not itself? What else could this presence truly know other than itself? With the mind, we can know countless things, but with the heart, we can intimately feel the singular reality, the one true essence that encompasses all.